This week on Sign Dogs. The sign Dogs are going to build a sign with my help. <laughs> this base is too small. Every day we look at signs. Some are beautiful, others not so much. For a business, any business, a good sign is crucial. So where does a good sign come from? Who creates these tantalizing works of art? In the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, it's done right here by the people at Signs Manufacturing. The people we call the Sign Dogs. So I just got off the phone with the people with the local game store. And it's really cool because they're putting in this new store that is going to have all kinds of uh, various types of gaming and, of course, games for sale, as well as events and stuff that they're going to put together. Um, more of the complicated board games rather than just your Walmart grade board games. Um, and their logo is really cool. It's got uh, the various types of wizard, elf, fighter, mage types, uh, healer type thing. So I'm excited that the store is going to go in and, and we'll have a chance to kind of play and, and see what it's going to do. All right. So it looks like, well, we have multiple layers to this sign. We have a, a big channel can in the background. We've got back plates with raceways. We have channel letters mounted on the front of that. This is a cool, detailed, 3D sign. We always love dimensions when we're talking about signs. We always love dimensions. If you have a lot of different layers to the sign, it looks a lot more attractive than just that flat, you know, generally looks like garbage that's just stuck up on a wall. So I really like that. I really like having <laughs> the print in here. Not enough people want to do prints, but having faces and something like this, I mean, you don't see that in very many people's signs, which means this sign is going to stand out compared to everybody else around them. My name is Carlos Cruz, and I'm the graphic designer of the art room. It all starts here in the art room. And right now we're working on a big um, sign that's gonna have LEDs inside of it. The name of the company is the local game store. We print it out, check for errors, and then uh, we apply the transfer tape, apply it to the face, you make sure that uh, all the surface is always clean. You have to make sure of that because of uh, little, tiny little things can affect the, the vinyl. And then after that is done, we send it to the trim cap area. So when Nancy first brought to me the, game, the job for Millennium Game, it was a very interesting design because they had both a JPEG and letters that all had to be kind of integrated into it. And of course, she brought this to me and says, hey, okay, so we're gonna light up the middle section with all the characters, but we've also gotta light up all the letters too, which makes an interesting problem because you, you gotta try to make everything onto the same plane as far as lighting, otherwise you have things being stacked out in different areas. We didn't have good artwork, so we had to start pulling things apart to try to figure out how we could do this. Eventually, we were able to go through and pull off half the letters on either side, and then, okay, well, we'll just make this as one big cabinet in, the, in between it with the letters off to either side. But some of these letters actually overlap in different places. We had to go back to the customer and try to find, make sure we had really good art because as we go through, we blow up anything and you're gonna to start to see all the bad details and all the things that's going on. They were able to give us a really good high definition print of their logo with their people in it, which was definitely helpful. So with that said, bring us better resolution. That actually allowed us to be able to go in and chomp out the other portions, including in and around the letters, so that we could make that as part of the big logo in the middle and then separate the letters off to either side. It, it was really neat just because of the fact that it, it presented a challenge. They wanted to have the letters light up and then they wanted the background to light up behind it. And if you think about it, if you have the background lights up and you've got the letters lighting up in front of it, you can't do that with metal because metal just doesn't pass light. 
we had to figure out a way to mount the letters on the front of that. So what we ended up doing is we took Lexan material. By using that, we could get light to pass through it and we could still actually pop rivet the letters to the front of it. Uh, and so that worked pretty well. But then on the sides, we had these wings that spread out to both sides that don't light up. So that's all metal. We had to actually use the CNC router machine that we got from Multicam. Thank you guys, I love that machine. We had to use that to precisely cut all the contours so that we could fit the sign together like a puzzle. All right, uh, this is a good foot side. Uh, a nice color, we match the right color. There's nothing wrong, but it's so shiny. You see what we're talking about? Is the reflected because this, this place is so shine and uh, we see the light reflecting and this is the way they look like. In a lot of times we like to do these custom jobs where they're really unique. They're not like anything else we've ever done before. And Nancy, of course, is awesome about going through and thinking about those different perspectives, different layers of lighting, and putting that forth in her proposals and then come to us. It makes it a challenge for us to figure out how to do what she's wanting to do, but it usually ends up as just an awesome sign. And this one, it was no different. Uh, after working out all the details and then cutting out all the parts and trying to work through everything, when the time that thing got done, Man, it is stunning. It is a beautiful looking sign. It's just something that Nancy's really good about, and she's able to take these pieces and understand it in her mind that, okay, these letters are gonna light out the front, they're gonna light out the sides, and they're gonna light out behind everything. And knowing that she wants everything to be seen. When we finally got this through and got it up, uh, it's one of those things that makes you feel proud to be a part of this, and for all the jobs that we do, these are the, these are the ones that make it worthwhile. You got people that think they get it done, and you got people that do get it done. This guy is the one that gets it done right here. Uh, so yeah, they were getting ready to go put this sign up, and uh, noticed that the letter T uh, was crooked. Uh, and you know, as long as everybody stands like this, it would have been fine. So uh, just before they go, we wanted to get it all straightened up and looking right. Uh, you know, these people have paid a lot of money for it. And it's really neat. <laughs> I like neat stuff. I'm Andrew Lucio, the local game store. What we do here is we do board games, we do role-playing games, we do card games. And a lot of what we do here is basically centered around the community, because what we want to be is a community center in the respect of we bring people together for gaming and other things as well. A lot of the things that we do here on top of that is we also do video game tournaments and we also have snacks and drinks. So people don't have to walk away, they can sit here and they can hang out with their friends and have a good time. And that's pretty much what it is, a community center for profit. I don't think we really had a lot of issues with it. Uh, the wall was kind of jacked up and they had a tight space to get in there to wire it. Well, the utility company blew a transformer and when we walked in the building, the Lewis, our electrician, touched a breaker box and all the power went out, half the power went out in the building. It turned out half the power went out in the whole complex because the TXU lost a, Encore lost a transformer somewhere. Who knows where though, it could have been blocks and blocks away, we don't know. Didn't really affect us because we have power on our trucks. Well, Jose Adami had to crawl up into a 16 inch space. Didn't look like it was supported by much either, but good thing he only weighs like 60 pounds sopping wet. He can't get a smaller helper than mine. You see how big his space I have? 16 inches. Anytime you have to drill through a thick concrete wall, you run into problems. Standard is maybe up to six to eight inches, but sometimes you get thicker than that. I've, I've actually drilled a three foot wall before and that was no fun. How's it feel up there, Jose? 
You tell me. <laughs> now that we're having our site installed, there was an electricity issue. Apparently, three transformers went out, and uh, not the the Autobots type of transformers, the actual like electrical equipment transformers. Uh, so we only have uh, very partial power, a little bit of lights. The AC is out. Our sign is amazing. We get a lot of compliments on it whenever people come in, especially when it's lit up at night. Want a sign? That's easy. <laughs> it looks awesome. The characters, the background, the different lighting, the color contrast between the black borders and the yellow looks, it just pops out, it looks amazing. And uh, we're really enjoying our sign. We have so many customers come in and tell us about driving by, seeing the sign, wanting to know about the place. I've, all the places I've ever worked, I've never had so many people come in just on foot traffic alone, just from that sign pulling them off the street. It's amazing. We have really enjoyed the outcome of the sign. It's very crisp, clean. There's such great depth on the lettering, and it's a really fantastic sign. We could have gone with a lot of cheaper options, but at the end of the day, your sign speaks to a much wider audience that you don't get to have any personal time with, and investing in that is going to be the best thing that you can do. So we wanted to go big or go home, and we went really, really big.